everyone. My name is Derek Covington Smith, and I'm going to be your host for Spotlight On. Spotlight On is an interview podcast where we talk to different artists working and living in Mississippi. When I moved back to Mississippi, I opened up my studio, the Little Yellow Building, and began teaching. And once the coronavirus hit and really settled in, it became quite lonely. As artists, we're always used to having a lonely studio practice and being one-on-one -on -one with ourselves. But when you take out the option of having that community, it becomes really hard. And that's where Spotlight On was born. I started reaching out to artists all over Mississippi and interviewing and learning more about their lives. I'd like to invite you to come along and join me as we talk to everyone and anyone who wants to share their art and their life with us. So I hope you tune in. I hope you subscribe and join us for Spotlight On. to Spotlight On. I want to welcome Mary Hardy into the interview this week. Um, Mary Hardy is a, an artist that plays around with a lot of um, abstract imagery, but brings in elements of recognizable um, content that, that helps build these stories and, and layered stories. Um, I'm, I'm very happy to be able to have her with us. She has been in our Hope exhibition, and that was our, our first inaugural ex exhibition at the Little Yellow Building. And then she was just recently in our 21 exhibition. Um, we're recording this in December, so she didn't even know that she was going to be in it yet. But <laughs> she's um, in our 21 <laughs> exhibition that was in January, uh, launched in January. Um, but Mary, welcome to the podcast, and thank you for being here. Why Thank don't you, you. I'm excited. Yeah. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your background in art and, and how you have come about? Well, um, it, I ever since I was a little child, I always loved making stuff. So, you know, it didn't matter what it was. I wanted to make something out of something. And um, we didn't have a lot of you know, art hanging on our walls in our house, or I didn't have a lot of exposure to museums or galleries growing up, but my dad was in the military and had a pretty high position. And, but on his time off, he would make, he did woodworking. And um, my mom was always knitting, although she was a nurse. And when we go visit my grandmother, she in in the mountains in Kentucky at the farm, um, she was quilts. We never had um, lot blankets in in our house. We we always had my grandmother's quilts. So we were wrapped in these beautiful colors and patterns all the time. So I think you know that my being, for whatever reason, picked up on all of that and. I just love making. So when I was in high school, of course, I took, well, elementary, my first art award was in, I think, fifth grade. And it was all in the paper and everything, even though I just won third place. But, um, you know, that was like the spur at the time. And so um, I, uh, you know, all through elementary school loved art and then high school took art. And then my teacher was pretty amazing. She said, you need to go to college and you need to major in art. Well, <laughs> my dad's like, what? <laughs> okay. You know, he was all of the faction of, you know, women. And, and this was unusual at the time that women need to be independent. Don't depend on a man. You need to get a degree. You need to, but you know, he was going art, you know, <laughs> anyway, I, I majored in art education and um, got my master, my undergrad and my master's in art education. And, um, and, you know, in the meantime, I'm making art, I'm teaching art and that has gone on for all the rest of my adult life. Where are you located in Mississippi? On Ocean Springs on the Gulf Coast. And that has a pretty happening art scene from what I hear. Um, of a sort, yes. I mean, yes. There's, you know, it's more, um, um, 
you know, related to coastal imagery and coastal things. So, you know, it's more of a resort kind of town. So a lot of the work here that you see in public is that kind of thing. But I mean, there are lots of great artists doing all kinds of different works, um, but that have their works in different places um, besides here. So um, yeah, it's, there's a lot going on and it's a good thing because that's what inspired me early. You know, when I was just trying to get out of college and what am I, you know, I was teaching, but I wanted to make art. So it was like, what, how can I get involved and what kind of inspiration? So there was, you know, the art association and a, a couple of things going on at the time that were really um, sort of instrumental in me having a, a little bit of a direction and people that you know, influenced me and, and kind of, you know, were inspiration. So. I know yeah. for, in a, in a, my own personal experience, it was very nerve wracking the first time I started trying to join in with other artist communities. How was that experience for you? Yeah, it was good when I was young, you know, right out of college, very accepting, you know, a little bit older community of artists, but it was good. It was like they took me under their wing, you know, and nurtured the new little, little artist, you know, and then, um, you know, things grew and, and, and I grew in different directions and went off teaching, but um, it was a good thing. Now it's, it's different because of COVID, you know, it's just so isolated and it's hard to get with other artists. So doing things like this is great. You know, it's, it helps a lot. <laughs> I, I hope so. It helps me. It helps me make it through. And, and I'm <laughs> so excited when I get to meet every single one of you, like each time I'm nervous and then it's like, here's the interview. Yay. Oh. Um, <laughs> You had briefly touched on your, your grandmother and your grandmother's quilts inspiring you. And I know that one of your pieces from 21 was based around your grandmother's quilt. Tell us a little bit about your imagery. Okay, so um, I, I love experimenting. So, um, you know, although I was trained classical drawing and painting, and that's what I taught, at, you know, because I taught at the high school level and then I taught at the college level. Um, and so, you know, I can do those sorts of things, but it got to the point where that just was like, mm, you know, it wasn't enough. And then I discovered, you know, Robert Rauschenberg and, um, you know, and I just went crazy. It was like, okay, okay. I mean, I knew I taught about Picasso and Brock and all the ones that, you know, use collage in their paintings. But when I saw, oh, it's giving me chills right now. When I saw Robert Rauschenberg's bed, I went weak in the knees. It was so amazing. So all of those, so I just collect pieces of things, you know, like, after the storm, my dad had a bunch of old pictures and in a box. And he goes, I don't know who these people are. Do you want these? And I said, okay. And my studio was destroyed. Everything was a mess. It was really depressing. It was stressful. So I just sat down with those pictures and I went, I don't know these people either. So I got a little exacto knife and I started cutting the people out. And then it just took off from there. You know, I saved, all, I saved everything. I mean, if you could see, I have one, two, three, four, five, six flat files in my studio. And most of them are filled with scraps of stuff that wouldn't even, you wouldn't even, you'd be going, why are you keeping this? But with my grandmother's quilts, my dad, you know, we just, they just used them. They didn't think anything of it. And my dad had his woodworking shop and he would take the one, the pieces of the quilts that were, you know, falling apart, stained cabinets and stuff with. And one day I just went, um, I just went, give me that. <laughs> and I kept all the pieces, you know? And so now when I work, I just open those flat files and I start rummaging through and something will go, will just 
my psyche will latch on to some something in there. And I start using that and it just takes off from there. It becomes very intuitive, but these things, you know, I just have a bit or a piece of a memory of it, but I start putting it in these atmospheric spaces. And that's what my work is really about. It's about depth and depth of emotion and depth of thought and depth of, you know, literal space and, and dreamlike and all of those things. So I would put them in that space and start letting them, I don't mean to sound hokey, but letting them wander and letting them find their place in there. So it's a real conversation between me and, and the canvas, but am I your question? <laughs> I just use a lot of pieces of stuff. So where I, I don't need anything outside of me to look at, to come up with imagery anymore because I did all that. Now it's what's inside of me, you know, in my heart and in my head. And, and those pieces spark that. And so then they get to take on a new life, you know? So I don't know which piece is in the 21. Um, um, so was the quilt, but- Yeah, I haven't sent out. <laughs> the quilt isn't the, the your, um, oh, okay. I think the name of it is, <laughs> I think the name of it is Stitches. Um, uh, I believe it was, I'm sorry. I just, I, I literally just built everything this weekend. Lindsay Carraway came down and we curated everything together and, and you know, yes to note everything. And the, the website is built and I'm in the process of building the book now. Um, but, but yeah, I, I, all but I believe all but one of your pieces is in there. Um, and your work wow. to me is so exciting to look at because it's different to look at. There are those layers of depth and you find an image or you find a little bit in piece right off when you look at it. And then as you're looking at that, other areas of the painting start to open up and then you're able to follow that into another area of the painting. And it, it is, it's, it's its own little narrated story within hey. your borders and it's oh, so right. I love that I just I didn't, yeah I love thank that. you you get it yeah you get it because <laughs> that's what I, that's what my mission is is to you know I don't want to I, I don't want to do surface stuff I want the viewer to spend time with my work so I want them to come and something sparks them to look and then I want them to enter in. I want them to enter in and wander around in that space and, you know, and not be afraid of the mysterious. It's so, that's the beauty of life is what is mysterious in my opinion, you know? And so, wonder, wonder is everything. Absolutely. You mentioned something in in your process talk. Um, that I do, I want to go back and touch on um, the, you had mentioned that you no longer have to look around you for your imagery and your inspiration. And now it's able to come from it within, but you also mentioned that you spent your time there. Um, for the younger artists that might be listening or the younger artists inside of us all, because even if you are an older person, there is a younger artist inside of you, depending on where you're at. Um, right. Tell us a little bit about that, that swap from using external um, data to create your pieces versus using internal processes to create your pieces. So, you know, I would like I, you know, just teaching classes, you know, and I would have to do demonstrations. And so figure drawing, you know, I could draw the figure and it's like, OK, what now, you know, um, it wasn't enough for me. And that's the best way I know how to say it. It was like, I can do that. Landscape, okay, I know the process, I can do that. You know, still life, okay, I know the process, value lie, da da, I can do that. What now? You know, like I would tell my students, um, when I taught painting at the college level, I was like, okay, in two weeks, I can teach you everything I know about paint, oil painting. 
and they would look at me and I would, and they would say, and I would say, now it's about what you need to say, what you need to say, and what you need to say. And that's where we're going to continue on because technique is easy to learn, but it, it is about what you want to say with it. So then that's when the individualness would come in, you know, and that's, that's so much a part of me. I'm so much about difference and be, you know, and it's not deliberate. It's not like, okay, I'm going to do this because everybody else, I'm going to do something different because everybody else is doing it. No, it's not that. It's just, you know, I feel deeply, I think deeply. And so I just have to do that. That's my truth. You know, that's my truth. So, so. Well, they're not lying when I tell Does they, it sell a lot? Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, that you. That's another conversation. <laughs> oh, yeah. The sales, the sales versus the reality. There's, yeah. um, there's a hard disconnect there. And I, I try to teach my students, my younger ones, you know, they're, they're. Yeah getting them early and trying to teach them that their ideas are okay and they don't have to shop them around to everyone. They don't have to shop them out to their parents and grandparents to be approved of. They don't have to shop it out to their friends. The only person that they have to like at the end of the day is, or the only thing they have to like at the end of the day is what they created. Now I, on, on that level, I was taught to shop and, um, you know, not just from an artistic standpoint, but from the way I grew up, you know, it's, you, you, mm -hmm. you get everybody else's approval before you do anything or, you know, you know what they're going to think. And it has hindered me in my art career because I technically can paint anything I want and that's great. Um, but when it comes down to saying what I need to say, I'm terrified constantly and hearing you able to dive through and, and uncover these bits in process, that's encouraging. And that's, that's a, almost, a, I don't want to say it's a, an inherent ability, but it's a very tempered skill um, that you've been able mm -hmm. to filter out the world and process through your own being. That's yes. incredible. Like, thanks, thanks. So you teach, do you, do you, are you still teaching? Where do you teach at? No, no, no I taught, um, for 27 years. Um, I taught high, I, well, one year with the elementary kids at a rural elementary school, which I loved, but it was too much energy. The little ones are so much energy. So, um, an opening came up at a high school and I taught there and everybody thought I was crazy going to teach high school. They're like, cause I was young and they're like, Oh, those kids are so bad. Oh, I loved it. I loved it. Loved it. Um, I taught at a high school for 18 years and then my former high school teach my high school teacher that I had, um, she, she was, Mary, you need to go back and get your master's degree. You need to do that. You need to, you got to teach on a higher level. So I did. And um, when she retired, I got her position at the community college. And um, I love that too. I did. And, and I was there for eight and a half years. And then um, Katrina hit and my mom had been ill for a long time and it was getting to the point where she my sister she lived with my sister and my sister needed more help so I had my time in so I went ahead and retired but um, I did love the students you know people say oh do you miss it and I no I don't miss the system but I miss the students a lot and and some of us are still really good friends. There's a couple that call me, you know, every now, I mean, just call me like, what's up? What are you doing? <laughs> you know, and I love it. They're my friends, you know, and, and um, so, yeah, so I'm not teaching now. I'm full time. Well, as much as I can full time in my studio and um, I teach workshops every now and then I have done that. And that's fun. And um, 
you know, basically just working on my own work and it's great. Well, while you were teaching, how did you handle the, the swap between your own work and your educational work? Did you, did you have a dedicated studio practice or was that on the side, um, like pushed off to the side while you were teaching? Cause I know that it's hard to handle. It is, it is, and that's a great question because I, I had a friend who um, would always ask me that, and I had, my son was, you know, young and coming up, so I really, you know, had to, you know, keep up with him, and my husband was um, a firefighter, so he worked shift work, so that made it even more so on me, and, um, but my studio is in my house, the garage area, and that was going to be designated as my studio, you know, right from the start. So I would just, you know, grab bits and snatches of time, you know, it'd be, things would be started and I would walk in here and it would be like, okay, da, 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 you know, and the way I work is very intuitive anyway. So um, it lends itself to that. And um, so I might work an hour. Or, you know, or after everybody went to bed, I may stay up till two o'clock in the morning, but it would be very random and it would be very, you know, when I could grab snatches of time. And this friend of mine who was teaching with me, she, and she had no kids and she was like, are you exhausted by the time you get home from school? And, and how can you, how can you go in your studio? I was like, oh, it regenerates me. It regenerates me. So you know, you just do it. If, it. if it means everything to you, which it does, I used to tell my students, you have to live, breathe, eat, and poop art. <laughs> and if you do that, you're going to find a way to do it. You're going to find a way. So, yeah. One of the joys that I've found about teaching is that the questions that they have were, of course, questions that I had growing up and, and that I've had in my art career. But it gives me the chance to re-solidify my own knowledge and to and to mm-hmm. like like oh yeah I know that yeah that's what yeah. yeah I can do this or I know what I'm talking about that's been a really enjoyable part for me I come in yeah. at the beginning of yeah. every class thinking I don't know anything and these kids are never going to learn anything and they ask a question and I'm able to spout off knowledge and I'm just like wow that just happened. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> love it um, <laughs> yeah and they and they and it keeps you in it keeps you in it doesn't it it keeps you it keeps you involved and you learn as much from them as they learn from you and it keeps you current and keeps you involved in what's going on and keeps you on your toes and you know all of those things and you know you can't be it I'm sorry, I may offend some people by saying this, but I'm just going to say it. You can't be a good teacher if you don't practice it. You know, that's my feeling. On the nose, on the nose. I, yeah, I, I agree. Well, and, and but at the same time, you can't blame because that's, you get into routine and you get into comfort and teaching is one of those jobs that gives you stability. And as artists, we don't have stability, but well, hardly ever yeah. in our entire lives, unless we have a job like teaching, do we have stability yeah. and falling back? I can't blame anybody for falling back into that and saying, you know what, this is it. This is great because it is. And if that's your goal, um, th- and that's another thing I've tried to keep, in the minds of my students is not everybody has to be that gallery artist. That's a, that's a, that's a hard road to toe, but there are teachers, there are designers, there are, gra- right. you know, yeah. there's this wide variety of what you can right. do to make money and be an artist and fulfill your passion. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Tell me, um, walk me through, like a day in your studio, not, you know, you come in and you've got paper and canvases laid out, I assume, because I I believe you work on both, right? You work on paper and canvas? No, mostly just paper. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so you pull out some files and you start pulling some pictures and what happens? Okay. So, you know, like we just came back from, we, we, we have, 
have a camper and we love to go camping. And so we just came back from a two week trip where the final destination was West Virginia and, you know, following, following the fall foliage. And so um, the pieces behind me, you know, I don't, I don't sit outside when we're camping and draw, you know, literally, but I'm walking and I'm riding and I, well, sometimes I do get some things out and just, you know, put down some color or put down, you know, but when I get, because I want it to be about a memory. I don't want it to be literal. You know, I want it to be about a memory. So the pieces, the pieces behind me and you can't see my floor, <laughs> it's all over the floor, but there's a lot of, um, <laughs> that's yeah. Yeah, I work on the floor. I work anywhere. So um, anyway, um, yeah. So you know, it's I want it to be about memories of that. So I will just start, like you know, like I will look at a piece of something and go, "Oh, that reminds me of da 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 da." You know, and 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 it just goes from there. You know, it's just about intuitive stuff, like putting down color or making some marks or adding some more collage pieces or they, they take a while to finish because, you know, I really have to, they, you know, they want to be wild at first and I, <laughs> I really have to like, and I do too. <laughs> That's the place that I'm the most uninhibited is in my work. I'm pretty, I'm pretty, uh, you know, little, anal in the rest of my life but it organized would be a better word but um in my art it's just like let's try it whatever happens and so you know and I guess because of my years of experience I can that's okay and I can trust that I know that's hard for people that are young in art because it's like okay well what do I do with it now you know I got this big mess and the whole thing is, you know, the whole final product is about editing. You know, it's like, okay, I loved all this, but they don't have to see it all. You know, so I start taking away. And um, yeah, it's just that kind of thing. It's And then some days I walk in here and it's just cleanup day, you know, but I think it's important to be present, you know, just to show up and be present you know, in your studio, because people that say, well, I don't know what to paint and I'm not inspired. Well, yeah, uh, you know, just go in there and start moving things around and you will, you will. So anyway, did I answer your question? Absolutely. <laughs> I get off the tangents. <laughs> Every, everyone, especially I mean, all the artists I've talked to, everyone has had these bits of amazing advice. And they all, every, all of us, we consider our tangents because we start and it leads mm -hmm. into what we want to talk about. And by the time we're done talking about it, we're like, wait a minute, what did I just say? Yeah. But, <laughs> but no, it's yes, <laughs> yes. Everything you just said was wonderful. Um, I personally would like to ask you um what is it because you're in I would say your second phase of your art career you went through in your teaching and now you're focusing in on your work and what you want to accomplish with your work um what is it what are, what are your goals right now what are you what are you looking for to do um because setting those small goals and setting those long-term goals are important for all of us. And some of us don't know how to set them. So <laughs> looking at, at, at you and your work and your confidence in your work, what's next? Oh, that's a hard question. Because I'm known for a those. Good <laughs> a good friend of mine who is a renowned artist in uh, New Mexico, she said that to me. She said, Mary... Uh, what's your five-year plan? No, first she said, what's your 10-year plan? I was like, ah, what's your five-year plan? Oh, no, 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 no. You know, it was like, you know, um, as far as the commercial world, it, that's really hard because um, I know that I will always make art. I know that I always will. 
And so what do I do with it at that point is, I don't know if that's what you're asking me, but um, I was, <laughs> I am represented by Carol Robinson Gallery in New Orleans. And I was supposed to have a solo show there starting April 1st, when did COVID hit? March 15th. <laughs> so uh, that had to be put on hold. She tried to do some, you know, um, virtual stuff. And I don't know if pe people are starting to pick up on that more now, I think. But early on, it was like, mm. so, so I have a lot of work here that's framed and ready to go. But I mean, I'm just waiting for her because she does represent me. So um, then the other part, other aspect that I've really been thinking of is that maybe I need to, you know, try some more, um, some more sh jury shows. Maybe I need to try some more, you know, find some other venues because honestly, <laughs> This is an, where I live is more of a resort area. So <clears throat> my work doesn't always fit here. And, you know, I tell myself still, and I tell my students, you have to find your audience. It may not be where you live, you know, and that's okay. Um, so I guess I'm still doing that. And, um, but right now I'm just enjoying this solitude, this like, because I'm forced to be home and I'm forced to be that I am just working, doing a lot. And I'm not worrying about where's it going to go and what, uh, you know, if you look at my, um, I think it's my Instagram um, opening page. I put this great quote up there. I can't remember her, her name now. She's, um, she's a um, poet and it talks about, that people don't have to like your work people just you do and she talks about your truth so I keep that in mind as well but then I go okay reality though is what are you can do with all this stuff <laughs> so you know I'm still trying to figure that out but you know so my thoughts Five-year plan, I don't know, really. <laughs> I'm just waiting till 2020 gets over. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good plan right there. Just make it through <laughs> the end of this yeah. and see what happens. <laughs> well, Mary, I really want to yeah. thank you for yeah. being with us and joining me. Um, one last question, and I'll let you get back to the rest of your day for any of the the younger artists and like I said the younger artists on the inside what would be a just general advice that you would like to give oh um I think we already talked about one thing is show up show up for your work you know whether it's grabbing bits and snatches of time leave it out on your kitchen table um on your wherever or just walk into your studio for a few minutes just walk in there and if all you do is turn around okay but just show up you know just show up for your work and something will grab at you and nag at you and you'll have to you'll have to do something and the other thing is do those what ifs you know what ifs those are so important if you if you think of something and you're questioning that that probably means that it's asking to be done so do it it's just a piece of paper it's just a piece of canvas you know you can paint over it you can gesso it out you can you know tear it out whatever it's just just do them because those are the things that are going to take you that's your subconscious coming in and those are things that are going to take you to those inner scapes I call them you know, those are so important. And I, I want to read you this quote, because I think this quote is so good. And it's about Albert Einstein, of all people, it says, the most beautiful thing we can experience is the mysterious. It's the source of all art and science. He to whom this emotion is a stranger, who can no longer pause to wonder and stand wrapped in awe, is as good as dead. His eyes are closed. Albert Einstein.
wow, you know, it's not just, it's, you know, art is filtered into so many things and, and it's all crosses over. So the other advice to young artists is look, read, listen, you know, explore and don't judge and don't think too much. You know, if you're judging your work right at the start, that's the kiss of death because you're going to freeze up. You're going to overdo it. You're going to hate it. So quit thinking and quit judging. And just like you said, that's so great that you tell your students, because I used to tell my students, you know, you know, the college teacher made him well, even in high school, made him keep a sketchbook. And I was like, don't let anybody look at it. Do not. It's yours. You know, because if somebody looks at it, they're going to question, why are you doing this? You know, don't do that. It's yours. It's all yours. Um, And just and so your trust in the work and your confidence in the work will build. And then, you know, get to the point where if you love it, that's what matters first. That's what matters first. And if you have that confidence and that love shows through of your work and you're honest and, it, and your truth shows, then it's going to be work that's going to be noticed, you know? And it may not be 100% in that selling realm. That's Selling work is not, does not mean it's successful. Um, and so, you know, again, thinking about what your point is and what your purpose is, and that's, that's, that's a jumping off point. That's a starting point, actually. Um, Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Oh, that's, thank you. That's, I mean, these are things that people need to hear. These are things that we need to know about our fellow artists that we all go through, because these are all things that, just like other bits and pieces of the art world, it's kind of kept hidden. That way, you know, oh, you know, it's, the insane artist was way back then, but you know, we've got it all figured out now. Nobody has anything figured out and we're That's all right. <laughs> wandering through the world blind <laughs> and just doing the best we that, can. So that is your, so right. <laughs> leave your trail. Yep. Um, Mary, yep. for anybody that wants to find you, there's maryhardystudio.com. And then on Instagram, right. you're Mary right. Hardy art. And, um, is there any other yes. places? What the, the gallery? You mentioned the gallery. Um, what was the name of that? Carol Robinson. Carol, Carol Robinson Gallery, Carol, New Orleans. Carol, yeah, Carol Robinson Gallery in New Orleans. Is there anywhere else that they could find you or your work or track you down? Um, right now, no. <laughs> That's okay. about it. So, but you know, I'm here. My work is a lot of my work is here. So, you know. Um, they can contact me through my, well, my email is on my website and, um, or through Instagram or yeah, any of those ways. So, so I'm honored to have been asked to do this, Derek. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to have you on and I, I, thank you for, for putting work into the shows you you had no clue and you know you still you barely know who I am we've now getting spoken for the first time um right. but it means a lot to me personally that you took a leap of faith on the first show and you liked what we did and now you you know you put a put work into the second show and I'm honored to have your work because I'm a huge fan of your work like it, I oh thank you so much but um well, that was Lindsay, you know, Lindsay, um, <laughs> Lindsay found me somehow on, on, I think Instagram and she kept bugging me and I, I, we had the best conversation back and forth, you know, in messages and I just love her. I mean, I, I think she and I come from the same cloth, you know, we're cut from the same cloth and she, um, so I have her to thank for getting, for giving me, you know, the confidence to do it because, you know, I'm just, I was really thrilled when I started looking around at what you guys are doing, what you do, you're, I mean, gosh, and how ungenerous that is and, and kind and 
all of those things for the way that you are taking out of your own time to help other artists that not many people do that. Now I'm going to get emotional. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm getting Thank emotional. You. I'm like, I'm tearing up. Oh, we got to end this. This has got to stop before one of us cries. Okay. Um, <laughs> Well, thank you for everyone who has tuned in um, and learned a little bit more about Mary Hardy. Please go and find her art. It's Mary Hardy Art on Instagram and maryhardystudio.com just to find her. Um, she has said, like many other artists have said in the past, reach out and contact us. We like to talk about you know what, anything. So reach out. Um, and for everyone, again, thanks for joining in. We will... See you again or hear you again next week.